Meanwhile at the Castle Podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we're queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. We are, um, well, let's see, we have our show notes either available down below this video, or you can go to our website at meanwhileatthecastle.com to find the clickable links for our show notes. You can also find us in our Ravelry group, um, just Meanwhile at the Castle, in the Ravelry groups tab. And we're coming to you from Salt Lake City. It is the last day of February 2018. That's wonderful because winter happy. is almost over. We're super happy. So we have a lot of fun stuff coming up in this episode. We're going to be talking about finished objects and works in progress and a recap of our awesome trip. It was so much fun. It was fun. To go to we Stitches West <laughs> in San Jose, um, California. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about our live video series that's going to be starting today. That's so February 28th, um, our first time sock knitters series. And then we'll have a giveaway at the end. A really so, fun one. I know. Yep. You're going to want to stick around for that. Super fun. So just a little bit of life. Are you recovered yet from our trip? Yeah. Last night I slept like, without moving the whole night. I didn't even have weird dreams that I remember. It was nice. So I think I Yay. just needed some sleep. It's, it was surprisingly exhausting, which we'll talk more about later, but yes. And I then was really tired. came back to snow, a lot of snow. A lot of snow. And it's still snowing. Well, not right this minute, but off and on throughout the week. Yep. I'm, I'm really ready for spring. I am I so ready for spring. I wish that nature would consult me <laughs> and do <laughs> what I say. <laughs> Oh, I just watched Secret Garden, the one that you liked with... Maggie Smith. Yeah, I don't like that one. You don't like that one? No. So oh, I love that one. There was a... What was the version? It was one that was made for TV that I remember watching growing up. Oh, I can't remember what the version was, but anyways, I finally tracked it down. I got it for like $4 on clearance somewhere because it was a bit obscure. Okay. And it's one I remember watching growing up that I felt more closely followed the characters in the story. So, but watching Secret Garden, mm -hmm. it makes me want to be in the garden. Yes. Without the snow. Yes. So... Although the snow did melt enough just around my flower beds for me to see my hyacinths. That's I was good. worried because they were starting to peek up from the ground and then it just dumped like 14 inches of snow. And I'm thinking they're going to, I've got tulips that started coming up and everything because we had such a mild winter and I was really worried that they were going to be dead, but I think they're still going to be alive. Yeah. They're still, so. wick. they're still wick. They're still oh, wick. They're still wick. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't seen Emily's Secret Garden Colorway Collection, uh, you have yarn collection, you have got to go see it and look at Wick, which is one of my favorites. I love it. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that little plug. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I really, really like the yarn. So oh, it's been fun though. We had we had a good time, but then came home and life is still here. And by the way, I think it's really interesting that I have straight hair today and you have curly hair. Because yeah. you're usually the opposite. Well, you yeah. often have curly hair. I change my hair every time. I never have straight hair. I like to do something different all the time to keep my husband interested. <laughs> to... Well, it seems to be working. <laughs> so, I used to do that all the time. I'm not sure how I feel about color. the straight hair. I'm, I'm trying to channel some Amy from Little Taylor S. Because her hair is always so gorgeous, but... I think I'll leave it to her because she does it better than I do. <laughs> you always look lovely. Oh, you're sweet. Thank we just you. get used to what we're used to. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Finished objects. We are wearing our finished objects. La 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 la. <laughs> Yours is so gorgeous. Very pretty. Very so, pretty. So gorgeous. We need to take some pictures of mine too. I know. We need to. So. I mean, okay. you can take pictures of yours too, but Dang. really, you know, just mine. Just mine. <laughs> well, but yours is a bigger deal. I want you to tell, tell us about yours. So this was the cowl that I've been working on the design for. And it ended up being a very simple pattern, which is what I started with. And then partway through, I tried all sorts of things and tried to make it far more complex than it needed to be. Ripped that out and then stuck with the original simple plan. 
So this one, I have decided that it's going to be called the Love Entwined Cowl. Ooh, I like. And what I wanted in a cowl was something that wasn't going to be all up on my neck right here. So I felt like it was holding my neck up high like this. Like a Shakespearean <laughs> ruff. Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted something that was going to be loose and drapey, and I wanted it to drape down and have a difference between the bottom edge and the top edge so that it would drape like mm -hmm. a scarf a little bit, not a scarf, a shawl a little bit more. And it worked out just, just right. And it's just a series of cables. It's like a three like a braided cable mm -hmm. um, and it increases as it goes out and you start from the top down and cast off a little bit loose on the edge. It's so pretty. And I called it Love Entwined because I was knitting it for Valentine's Day. I wanted to wear it then but I didn't get it done in time. And the cables with the braids whenever I take a picture of it, it looked just like a series of hearts connected down together. So that's so why. I am calling it that, and I will be, I say this, I will be publishing the pattern now that I've finished it. So I will, in a little while on Instagram, call out for some people to test if you're interested. Which so, is fabulous. It's gorgeous, Deborah. It took it's a so single pretty. skein of fingering weight yarn. Thanks, Emily. Fingering weight yarn. Um, I used um, MJ Yarn Sophista Sock in the Dragon's Blood colorway. Now, this one is 100 grams, um, but there was only 390 yards, and so I actually wasn't able to finish the last repeat that I wanted on here. So most fingering weights are more mm -hmm. than 400 yards. So if you're going to choose one, you're going to want one that's a little more than 400 yards, So because it will work best okay. for that. So I'm going to have to knit that next, I think. I think you should. Because I, I don't have enough should. stuff. I hear your needles it. clicking away. I'm clicking, clicking. <laughs> and it's not on this cowl because I haven't, I have it written down in my own, my own wording that works for my brain. Now I have to make it that works for other people's brains. So oh, other people's brains. What is your brain like? <laughs> well, will my I wording work for your brain? I don't know. <laughs> Well, awesome. So that's Good what job. I finished, and I wore it to on our trip, which was really mm -hmm. nice because I was cold the whole time. It was I don't cold think I for up. California, so but it was still way better than here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I went anticipating typical California weather that mm -hmm. I'm used to, and it was supposed to be like 60 degrees, and 60 degrees here. I mean, like we're wearing a t-shirt, come on, and <laughs> capris and flip flops. 60 degrees there felt far more like our 30 degrees mm -hmm. here. We were so okay. cold. Hold on. What? I have, I have a flippy hair. There we go. Hair. Got Thanks. it. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Walking out, we were like, <laughs> we yeah, outside at night, just was. shivering. <laughs> right. So. All right. But the last day. Was I know. So anyway. I keep saying, we're going to talk about that. But So what do you I finished yours? this one, which I'm not terribly thrilled with, but. I don't know. Anyway, this is the Primavera capelet. Deborah has worn her version that I made her several times on the podcast. So I finally decided I needed to make one for me. I knit this in Hooker's Corner in Electric Slide on Single Ply. And it's, I really like it. But the problem is, I'm going to take it off for a second. The problem is, is that I was trying to make it not too tight at the neckline it's knit bottom up and so when i got to the top i did a, i didn't do a typical bind off i did um kind of a little bit stretchier bind off it's the same one that's in my scrappy bias shawl the bind off for my scrappy bias shawl and um i feel like it was just too big now and so i'm not sure if i'm actually going to go back and undo the bind off and redo it i just would like it to have like you were talking about have the top lay higher than the bottom mm -hmm. oh and by the way i made this blouse to go i anyway just there you go but to go on our trip and then i didn't even wear it while we were on our trip <laughs> but anyway but it's still pretty and i love the color i mean could you get any more vibrant than this like almost neon pink with the purple haze it's just so pretty it is i love it it looks really nice I like it. I've gotten lots of compliments on it, so that's been fun because I've just worn it last yesterday and today. It only took um, you a few days to knit it. 
Well, I made it while we were traveling. Um, so we had plenty of travel, you know, waiting in the airport and on mm -hmm. the plane and sitting around at stitches. I knit on it quite a bit. So yeah, it took me a few days to do it, but I really like it. You were fast. And it's fun. It's my, this is the only cowl I own. It's the only one you have. It's the only one I have. Better start but see on this how one. it's like, this is just hanging too low. It needs to hang more like yeah, yeah. here. I don't know. I lost my page. There's only four here. Why can't I seem to find? It's No, it's, there is five. Okay, there five pages. That's what I need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's my only finished object. So. Well, we finished two, so that's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. Okay, I have some progress. I have a sock. Uh, I didn't bring my sock blockers over. That's okay. We can still tell it's a sock. I hope you can tell it's a sock. If you can't, then our sock knitting series is going to be a failure. <laughs> okay. So this sock is, the yarn is a Deborah Norville Serenity yarn. And the color is Surf. Surf. This is a project that my one of my daughters started and I told you I am working on clearing all the needles and rather than start with my own needles I decided to start with all of my children's because that made sense for some reason. Anyways, so my daughter had started this sock for me a year ago and got to just just to the heel decreases or the gusset decreases and so then I picked it up and started knitting on it and I really like this yarn. I think this one's going to just be one of those robust socks that lasts for an eternity, especially mm. because my daughter knits so <laughs> tight. I was trying to match her gauge and I'm like, knit tighter, knit tighter. Finally, I went down a needle size to a size zero and my gauge is still slightly larger than her gauge. So, <laughs> and we're not loose. See, goosey, I don't know either. how she does that. I'm like, the circumference of the needle doesn't get any smaller. She's probably <laughs> knitting only on the tips of the needle. That could be. If she's knitting right on the tips where, where the point starts to come in, then it has a smaller circumference. Therefore, it will be smaller. But it fits really well. Um, so I was trying to count what her gauge was. She had like nine and a half stitches per inch. And mine are eight sometimes eight and a half. So anyways, it just means that it took far longer to knit. It was like the longest time knitting this this much. It took me as long as it takes me to knit it's an so entire bright, sock. Though. Yeah, but this will be really fun to wear. So one sock down, one more to go on size zero. <laughs> you people that knit on zeros, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's just a vanilla sock. Oh, and I, I like this in a little bag here with my Notions pouch from one of our friends, Beth. She's little, is, little Izzy Knits on Instagram. And it's just really fun, because look, it matches the project. How cute. It does. <laughs> or coordinates really well. All right. So let's see, oh, and this is how much yarn I had left after that first sock. I didn't weigh it. But then you've got another ball. I've got too. another ball. So, could have knit the leg longer. Because there's plenty. Because you really want to keep knitting forever, forever. on those zeros. <laughs> oh, goodness. So what about you? It's actually warm in here. I warmed this room up extra it's warm. It's comfortable. It's nice and comfy. And, but now this is feeling really warm. Finally I'm not, got I'm not warm. overly warm. I'm good. <laughs> it's okay. just because you're hot. I am. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get away with that, can we? <laughs> Okay, let's see. I am knitting, and I showed this before. I haven't made much progress on it. I've been watching so many podcasts from all of our lovely English friends that I just keep wanting to say everything with an English accent. I but I would do, that do and it, it comes out. so poorly <laughs> that it would just sound ridiculous. So I'm just trying to like progress. I'm trying to say <laughs> progress. Okay, progress on this. This is a French toast. Um, pullover by Alicia Plummer, which I am to here, which is like an inch farther than I was last time when I showed it. But it's coming along quite well, actually. 
And it's got this fun cable with slip stitches in the cable, which I think just love, looks really cool. Makes it just a little more interesting than just a, you know, a general cable. And I am knitting this in this very economical yarn by Lion Brand. This is Touch of Alpaca in the blush colorway. And I'm doing this for my daughter, my 19 year old, Aria, knitting this. And it's just fun. It's actually really enjoyable because I'm at that point in the body where even though there's a little bit of interest going on because I'm doing some waist shaping or, you know, to, to come out for the hips and I'm doing this cable. So you have to keep track of that. It's still really quite simple. And so it doesn't take much brain power and I can just pick it up whenever, wherever I am in the row, it's just ready to go. And so that's nice. So this is living in my family room on the ottoman of my chair. And I just go down there and if I have a few minutes, if, if I ever, ever have a few minutes to sit and watch TV or something, I'm working on that. That's nice. I just think about if I left anything out that my dog gets it. I realize I've... Yeah. I've, I am now... My goldfish aren't much of a danger. <laughs> To my knitting. Well, they're not. <laughs> Do you still have goldfish? Yes, we have two goldfish. I thought they died. No, we've we've gone through a few over the years, but my my kids are allergic to animals with hair, so basically, <laughs> just you know, don't have, lick the goldfish and you'll be fine. <laughs> don't lick the goldfish. No, we have Phineas and Mr. Collins. You? What happened to Mrs. Or no? What to was Charlotte. Name? Charlotte died, no, and so no, did Lady Catherine. Lady DeBerg. Catherine Deberg, but they called her. Milady. Milady, that's right. I, she I died laugh every time Arya. That was really name. sad. Milady was our favorite, actually. She was a she had a beautiful, oh. long, flowy tail. Anyway, yeah. Well, some this is the problem. So we have this little castle in our fish tank mm -hmm. because you know castles. You need castle. Okay, so we have this little castle in our fish tank. But the problem is, is that we've had two, this happened to two different fish is that they are used to being able to go and hang out in this one little spot in the castle, but then they get bigger and they don't know they're bigger. Oh. And so two of them have gotten injured that way. And actually, oh. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to tell Mr. Collins and Phineas apart, but one of <laughs> I them. I don't know how to tell Collins. Don't go in there. I don't know, I don't know how to tell Mr. Collins. I'm not going to marry you. <laughs> You're a creepo. Okay. But, um, I don't know how to tell them apart. My kids do, but one of them has an injured swim bladder because of that, which means mm -hmm. that he floats to the top. So I call him Bob because <laughs> he just goes, boop. And it's healed over time, so it's better now. But oh, just, poor sad. Mr. Collins or Phineas. Yeah, whichever one. Bob. <laughs> He's Bob. Um, yeah, so we've had a few goldfish, but they don't harm the knitting. They don't so harm it's knitting. okay. That's good, because my... And I've taught the nine-year-old not to <laughs> gnaw on the yarn, so we're all right. My youngest daughter, when she was younger and she had pica, it was constantly, stop licking the walls, stop licking the car, stop licking your sister, stop eating the speakers, stop, <laughs> stop eating the ashes from the fireplace. So we might have a problem with her every now and again. Might. That reminds me of this. I think I told you this before, but Aria was reading to me one of those lists of the weirdest things you've ever had to say to your kids. <laughs> And one of my favorites is we don't tickle people we don't know. Because, <laughs> like, tickle, tickle. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. I can just see yeah. that. <laughs> Conversations you have with your children. <laughs> oh, gracious. So, there I go. Work in progress. All right. I have one more. We have some things we're, like, not gonna show on the podcast so we're trying to like anyway all right this one it i've gotten so far on it <laughs> the thing is i really want to only be knitting on this but i have some other oh, projects know, that are happening that. now it's, it's all scrunched up right now so you can't quite see the beauty of it it's i've i'm beating my lace knitting i'm just telling you this is my first time that's beating, not beating, which well, is different. Sometimes, okay. Anyways, it's so simple. It just slow. It's slow because every like five stitches on every third row, whatever, I'm adding some beads to it. So 
this pattern is, let me get to it, by Swift Yarns, and it is called Petals and Picos, and the designer is Carolyn McKenna. Look how pretty that is. Oh. It's an infinity scarf, um, and she has it in three different sizes where really you just kind of end where you want, and you double it over to get the, the length that you like, but also the fullness. It gives it, it's just a lot more full, because I mm -hmm. thought about, instead of knitting it longer, that I'd make it wider and make it more like a cowl like this, but I think that when you double it, you just get a different type of fullness, and just looking at the pictures on on the pattern page. I just, I love how it looks. I even chose a yarn as close as I could find to that. I mean, it's not the same yarn, believe it or not. It is by one of my new best friends. Our new best friends. I met her first. She's my new best friend. <laughs> uh, her We're name's Kathy and <laughs> Hula Hut Yarns. That's a problem being sisters sometimes. I know. Because. And we have like all the same friends. We have the same friends. Well, and sometimes you're like, can't I just have something that's my own? Like when sisters growing up, yeah. always, when there's six of us, not sisters, siblings, and I was in the middle and, you know, most of my clothes were hand-me-downs, which were usually not my style because they'd be like from Amelia, my sister who is very different in her style and very, you know so sometimes it's nice to have something of your own but we don't really need to have our own I know because, because we, actually we all like share. the same people yep. and we're best friends so there you go anyways Hula Hut Yarns the color is zombie cupcake <laughs> <laughs> and it's on her Maui sock base which is a four ply fingering and it is an 80 20 super wash, super wash merino and nylon it has 115 grams and 434 yards so it's nice and plump yarn it feels really really nice it's very it's gonna be so pretty gorgeous, gorgeous and gorgeous. the beads i'm using are so pretty i'm like can i put them in something to see no i have a little video it doesn't really even matter but i like the beads so much i'm putting the little video here so you can see it but, is, but they are pretty they're, they're just so sparkly so that's going to give it a nice weight, too. Yeah, it'll, it'll have a really drape. pretty weight. And it has pico edging on both sides. So, I like it. Ooh la it'll la. Be nice for spring. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Spring colors and lacy. Now, I don't know about you guys. Do you ever think, I really need a certain item that you're knitting? So, you go knit it, and then you realize it doesn't match anything that you are. So, then you have to go buy an outfit to match what you've knit. Or so close. Or yeah. so close. Like, shouldn't I work it the other way around? Like, I have this thing that I really want to wear, this article of clothing, and I'll knit something to match it. No, I just don't seem no, to. No, do because that. how long does it take you to sew a shirt? Yeah. Compared how to it... how long does it take you to knit a sweater or a cowl or something? It takes something. me longer to sew a shirt than to drive around and find the shirt that I want. <laughs> so, it takes me you... less time. I, I sew almost every. Top I own. I don't. I don't. Well, but you can find things. See, I have a hard time finding fabrics that I like, fabrics to buy, and fabrics of clothing already made. I really have a hard time yeah, finding them. So do I. Because I can't shop in Target's children's section, <laughs> which is where everything is that I want to wear. Because basically, I'm a child when it comes to fashion. <laughs> Your jewelry that you had purchased. It was the plastic beads from the kids section at Walmart. Mm -hmm. they look and they're like from, perfect. They look, they look like they're from the dollar store. Well, basically, they're from Walmart. But everybody... I love them. I got so many compliments on them. I was going to say, everybody's like, wow, those are fabulous. Where'd you get those cute, cute necklaces in Walmart in the kids section? <laughs> this is my life. Um, what do I want to talk about? Oh, I know what I'm going to talk about. This right here. So this has been kind of sitting, but I haven't showed it since it's been at this phase. This is the teensy little baby sweater I'm making. It is called the Alpha B Basic Baby Cardigan by, by Knit Pearl. And it's a very, very, very simple seamed baby cardigan. And I am knitting this in my Just Jane colorway. 
but it's the Just Jane colorway that was extra purpley. Anyway, um, I have seamed, I have seamed the shoulders, I have seamed the sleeves, so set the sleeves in, but I still have this seam right here on both sides. Well, let's see on both sides. I thought no, I just on one. So I've seamed it down the one side and I just need to seam the other seam and then add the neck and button, neck trim and button bands. But it's so it's tiny very and adorable. Cute and delicate since it's in fingering weight. Yes, I and love fingering stitch, weight baby stitch. knits. <laughs> I really, really love them. Also, here's a thing I've been thinking lately. Do you know what I really adore? Is the look of reverse stockinette when it meets up with ribbing. I just think it has the prettiest finish. Let's see it. That is pretty. It just looks so tidy and lovely. Anyway, this has been really fun. And you know what? People are so afraid of seaming. Don't be afraid of seaming. Seaming is not hard. In fact, seaming can be much easier than picking up stitches from time to time because mm -hmm. you can just, you can easily adjust and make sure that it's just right. Um, and look at the cute, like how you get like almost this little puff in the sleeve right there. It just has a lovely finished quality to it um, and gives a structure to your garments mm -hmm. that you don't get with seamless knits. Yeah. Now I love seamless knits too. I'm not saying that they're, that one is better, but just don't be afraid of seaming. I think that we're just, anyway, we're afraid of it. And therefore a lot of designers are catering everything to being seamless. Um, because we as purchasers of the designs um, don't like to seam, but we should be a there's little more some really in things. beautiful things. Right. That's not even it's a hard not thing. Hard. It's not hard. I mean, just starting to knit, that's more challenging than anything else here that you're going to do afterwards. So come yeah, on. <laughs> the, knit, the, the seaming is not difficult. Um, anyway, so that's been really fun. And this it's is what so the cute. yarn looks like. You know, and the the that. camera is washing it out a bit. It is. And it's, it's making a little more cool tone. It's a it little warmer like. than that. Yeah. I love it's it. It's really pretty. It reminds me of like a French pastry or something. I don't know why, because it's gray. Maybe that doesn't make any sense. It's like lavender. Uh, never mind. I have no words. <laughs> oh, there's another work in progress. I forgot about in there. <laughs> what are you knitting? <laughs> That's say the beginning of a sock head hat well that's fun I don't know why I have when did you start it I don't remember <laughs> I mean it was only a couple of, I mean I, I remember starting it but I don't remember I think I finished something and I desperately was like I need something to oh yeah I was in my writing conference I went to a writing conference and I took um, a bunch of my some of my students who are high school age like middle school high school age to this writing conference and I finished knitting all the pieces on the sweater and I wasn't going to start trying to seam it while I was sitting in, in classes. And um, so anyway, Ella was with me, her daughter mm -hmm. Ella, and she was bored in one of the classes. So I said, here, do you want to cast this on? <laughs> so she just cast on not even quite all the stitches, but, you know, just sat and cast on for a little bit. And then I worked on it. And this is McMullen Fiber um, Company in... Elect no electric rainbow, which was one that you had in your sweater. Yeah, I originally had this in my faded sweater that I pulled out. So anyway, there you go, sock head hat in the beginnings. That's a two for two for right. one in one bag. You have a surprise project. Forgot I had that. That's fun. All right, we have a combined project here. Oh, yes. that's really fun. We started. I haven't worked on it since I took it away because I haven't had a minute. Oh, you haven't worked on it? <laughs> no, I haven't had any time. Yeah, it's been crazy. We started a friendship shawl. I'm grabbing this. Oh, Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> so, we're doing a, let's see, this is the correct side. Not like it really matters. It's just the other side has lots of ends. This is a scrappy bias shawl that we started on our trip. 
And while we were on our trip, we had, as we would sit and visit with people, would ask them to knit some, put some stitches in on this shawl. So this will be a gift for a friend. So it's our friendship shawl, and we're just using a lot of minis from all over the place. A lot of these were from my uh, Christmas mini advent swap. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun to have something special to put it in. Yeah. And then we also used a couple of minis started that I purchased at Stitches. Like this one right here. This yellow it? one right here. Ooh, it's pretty. And this lighter green. Were those right both from the same? Yep. Daughter of a shepherd. No, 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 no. Farmer's daughter. Farmer's daughter. Farmer's daughter. I love this yellow. Gorgeous, gorgeous Rosy yarns. Rosy colors in it. And That's a little bit beautiful. of greens. It's very pretty. That's really, really pretty. But it was fun to have lots of people sit down and say, could you knit a row or two on it? And yeah, and it's not difficult. It's a two row repeat, which is a simple, like, easy. Very, very, very easy, so. Lovely. Um, and I really like to weave in ends as we go. So I wove in the ends, left like an inch, snipped it. After blocking mm -hmm. it, then I will snip it the rest of the way. But mm -hmm. that way you don't have a million yeah. ends to weave in at the end or hanging down when you ask somebody to knit on it. It's just mm -hmm. not so fussy that way. I like to keep a progress keeper on the right side. I agree. I always I mean, it. it's easy for me, you know, knowing the pattern and everything, but handing it to somebody Mm -hmm. um, that just makes it easy to remember. Well, and plus, when you hold it out, it's easy. But when you just pick it up, it might not always yeah. be yeah. really obvious. So, that's it's lovely. The progress on there, we're at about a third of the way through it. And I've only knit, a, like, a couple rows on it. So, I'm taking it for a little bit to go, go to town on it. This is your cute bag from Mini Castle Designs. Yeah, I keep her tag, her the business card that she put on there, on the zipper, because I just like it so much. So it's so it off. cute. And while while I'm around, people are always asking what it was, and I keep going to give them the card, and I don't really want to. So then they take a picture because <laughs> I like the card. That works out. <laughs> All right, what else do you have? That's, that's finished objects or works, works in, in progress. progress. I mean, Let's I have see. a million, but actually making progress on there I'm to show. Showing. Yep, no. I think that's all I've got right now too that I'm showing. Okay, well it is time for us to share a little bit about some of the people that we met. We had so yeah, much fun some at Stitches. Dyers. Now first of all, this is the first time Deborah and I have done anything like this where just the two of us went and traveled somewhere. Now we've been to like some homeschool retreats that are kind of local, mm -hmm. um, but that like they're local, like an hour away drive. And most and of the time, our husbands go. Yeah, because they go and like um, volunteer and cook food and clean and things like that because they're so awesome. Yep. But even when we do things like that, we're usually teaching or we're um, host. We're hosting and yeah, a cabin, and, cabin hosts or things like yeah. that. So to do something like this where it was just for fun and it was just us. Yep. We've never done that. It was my birthday gift from my 40th birthday from my husband. He asked what I wanted, and he was probably thinking I was going to say, Are you on Swift? <laughs> and you're like, I want to go to California. <laughs> I said, I want to go on a trip. Without you. <laughs> <laughs> I love my husband, but he wouldn't be as excited to he go wouldn't. to the yarn. Show, he, would be, so. he would be sweet, and he would go oh, and be actually, really he'd supportive. Actually, he wanted to go because he likes to, yeah. like to spend time together. But it wouldn't be the... It wouldn't be that he was there because he was having great fun. He would yeah. be there for you, which is it, very exactly. Kind. So that was really fun, though. We were brave and we flew by ourselves and rented a car by ourselves yes. and drove around by ourselves. I know that sounds dumb, but like when you're just used to being there with your husband or something, and he just does it. I don't have to worry about it. I yeah. I plan all the other work on all the other stuff. He takes care of those arrangements. I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to think about you know, any of that. So that was, that was a little bit unnerving, but, but we figured it out and it was good. Yeah, we did. And that was what we were talking about at the beginning of the year on our bucket list that, mm -hmm. that we wanted to go out and see people and meet people and do more of that. So we'll do yes. more of it. Do any of it. Do <laughs> any of it. Yeah. So we did. And it was so fun. And, um, we spent a lot of time hanging out with Tristan and Christy from Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. 
and um, they are part of our knit night and but but we hung out with them a lot and that was so fun we just had such a ball with them and we got to meet some friends we've only known online yeah that was, um, the best part of all of it is really just spending time mm -hmm. with with people so yeah. yeah buying yarn lots of fun yes um, but it can be stressful and because expensive. they're so <laughs> expensive and painful on your neck when you're carrying, carrying your bag, your bag and stuff right where you're like, oh, I'm only buying three skeins and 14 later. <laughs> let's see, 14 skeins times 3.5 ounces. I'm going to do the math. Hold on, let's see how much it was. Don't forget the tags. The tags weigh something. <laughs> 49 ounces. Okay, let's see. Which is, oh, three pounds. Three Plus pounds on tags. Your Come on. Yeah. Three Plus, more like, pounds. every time you pick up, like, a craft, like, the, when you go to the Craftsy booth and they give you, like, this little bag with, a like, a catalog and, anyway. <laughs> Plus, we had to carry chocolate. Oh, goodness. That Hello. right there. Was, that was, like, we're 17 like, pounds. Like, right forego the water. Bring the chocolate. We'll find a drink when we're there. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the water? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. So we, we had a good time. Though. We did. I was I was so glad that we went and mm -hmm. we ate good food. I, that oh that was nice. That was really nice. Both of us are talking about that when we travel with our families, you're always trying to like make sure you're everybody is happy and and um we have some picky eaters in our families. And so trying to satisfy the picky eaters and make sure that they will eat and be happy. Uh, we don't have meltdowns so that you can enjoy your trip, right? And the people that are focused on just eat so we can move on and the, right. and focusing on the budget when you're feeding a lot more people. Right. So um, usually when we travel, it's like, yeah, we went on a trip and now let's go home and eat something because... Yes. Yeah. But we ate good food every meal. I am so glad. At the beginning, Emily and I were saying, what is it that you really want from this? And I said, I want no schedule, and I want to eat. <laughs> Real food. We didn't eat any fast food or garbage. No. Well, we ate chocolate. Okay, but I ate. We I ate. ate. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, we ate real, yum, yeah. delicious food. That was wonderful. I was very happy about that. Yeah. So, uh, some of our favorite vendors that we met there, okay. that we yes. ran into... So I want to talk about this we one have, first. We have four that we wanted to uh, five five that we wanted to spotlight. So if you haven't heard of these vendors before, uh, yarn dyers, because what we like we really like supporting small businesses. Mm -hmm. We've all owned them or own small businesses. Um, Emily's a yarn dyer. I sell bags. We really like to support makers. So and we have like our husbands have have owned or do own their own yeah. businesses so anyway now this one's not as small but it is still a small business yeah it's, but it's this was a person. this was like a a fangirl moment for me i got to meet susan b anderson we both did sorry mm -hmm. we got to meet susan b anderson and i got this book which is her string along toys and it's autographed which is so cute yay but how adorable are these so we got to meet her. She's absolutely wonderfully gracious. And I got these three colorways. And I think, I don't know if, if Christy actually did it, but Christy, um, like I said, uh, she's Yarn Cafe Creations. I think she was going to pick up some of the other colorways and we were going to share them so that we could knit a bunch of these tiny little were you doing? string along animals. Yeah, so like the little green is for, was the, it for the frog. frog. Yeah. And then I got pink and gray for some of the mice. There's some mice in there. Oh, I, I thought I had the other one. They're earlier on. Sorry, I it's thought okay. I had They're... it saved in there. So here's some of the mice right here. But they're so, sorry, they're so teen, teensy. They're just little. And they're little hands and feet. One hand has a little bobble mm -hmm. and the other one has a, has a loop. And same thing with their feet. So you can just string them together and... Anyway, and so we got Barrett, I got some Barrett Wilco worsted weight yarns to work on that. So that was just really fun because I really admire her and it was awesome to meet yeah, her. Yeah, I like how she just took a big leap mm -hmm. <laughs> in starting her own yarn company. Yes. And she's just so fantastic. Her designs are so sweet and really fun, and I like her style yes. that she has. It's very distinct. Um, the colors that she has 
for all of her yarns are just really just soft and cozy. I like. Yes, and as a designer and as a teacher, she's she's just always really focused on quality and connection, and mm -hmm. that's really that's always important. important. Oh, I kind of need that pattern. All right. Oh gracious, these are we have so and much. all of these. So. I was thinking, oh, I don't buy that much yarn until at the end we dumped it all out onto a bed together and we were panning across and I was like, that's a lot more than I thought I got. Just the many Well, alone. now some of it was gift to, yeah. to us. I didn't, I, I don't have all of mine out here, but. That's okay. I was going crazy with the minis. I had a couple more that I've already got into. So I, I just like minis, mm. minis gains. They make me so happy because you can There's do everything a bundle of with them. I love I them. I just got them. I just picked one up from all the booths that I could find that I liked. A mini. I love this bundle. <laughs> Yay! This is That's for my mom. Pretty. I'm gonna make her socks. Hopefully by her birthday, which is in just a few weeks. We'll see if that happens. Especially but because you know how much you like to weave in all those ends. I know, but I actually like the last time I did the scrappy socks. Totally had fun with it. So I don't know what my problem was before, but anyway. So this one is going to be, and this was 100 Ravens, was the... That's so pretty. And look at the name. Pixie Surfer Madness. Anyway, that's a fun one. That's perfect colors. Okay, so we were given this, just the sweetest gifts from our friends, and they are always so generous to us. They are. So we have Christy and Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. Mm -hmm. So this is Dragon Horde Yarn. Mm -hmm. Mine is Wonders of a Fairy Tale. And this one's called Fury. This is a DK weight, so I'm, um, Abby has requested a kitty cat hat. Oh, that sounds that. good. So I'm making that for yeah, her. Yeah, this, oh, and this is a perfect color. Perfect color Gorgeous, for me. gorgeous. They were both so yeah. pretty. And then from uh, Christy from Yarn Cafe Creations. Oh, look so at those. Pretty. They would be pretty together. Look at them. Oh, very pretty. I was looking at... I keep pulling out. Ooh, that would be lovely. I keep pulling out these different oh, oh. colors that would look <laughs> so pretty together. Huh. I'm such a dork. I'm such a nerd. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. This one's called oh. the Spring Fling. Look at that. Wow. No, that is See? gorgeous. That look gorgeous at Gorgeous pair of socks. <gasps> lovely. The Spring, the spring fling. fling. And which one is yours? Mine's Barb. Barb. Which is funny because what was so funny is that I was ooing and aahing over this colorway mm -hmm. on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I need to order that, but I'm going to Stitches, so I'm just gonna save my money. And we get there, and she gave me this one. I was like, so sweet. Got it. She knows, knows me really well. That was very kind. Let's see, we got some Craftsy yarn that, that was a fun thing. You wanna know what this one is? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Color. No, we had Cloudborn Superwash. Any okay? If you were at the fashion show, if you went, we're just going we're to just say that say, they did a great job. The the um, the one um, one of the presenters. The designs were fabulous. The models were fantastic and really fun. Um, I really liked them. Um, we just had one presenter that was kind of kind of uh, making a mockery of of it unfortunately he wasn't taking it as seriously as I think everybody else was I wonder if he was just like anyway doesn't matter. nervous or something yeah I I'm really crazy when I'm nervous but anyways in there the uh, other announcer kind of was trying to save the day and so he got everybody the sponsor reciting the name of the of this yarn until yarn. you can say it in your sleep and so anyways and then we got there some we of it that's very nice okay so let's let's go to Probably this our, one. Oh, okay. And then we'll do favorite one at okay. the end. Okay. Did now you the get point some? of this, by the way, we are not trying to be like, look at all of our yarn. I mean, the reason we're sharing this with you is just because we found some new people and we thought you might be interested in checking them out. Um, at the very least, just go and look at what they have to offer. Um, but it's not like a bragging session. No, I, like I don't support, want to come across that way. We just like to support yeah. these right. dyers. Indie, biz, indie dyers. Indie dyers are bust. Yes. Come on, that's what we and just And not said. neither of us is made of money at all, believe no, me. No, 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 no. But we saved a lot. In order, we knew we wanted to shop, and so we like didn't eat. Preparing <laughs> I had to, to decide 
food. Because there was an extra skein of yarn I wanted, and I was trying to decide, let's see, lunch and dinner or yarn. <laughs> you Third can lunch. always eat later. I had <laughs> snacks in the hotel room. <laughs> You're good. So anyway, I just wanted to preface that, that... Anyway. Yes. Well, we just found beautiful things. There were so we many beautiful things. We were just highlighting a couple of, of dyers. Mm -hmm. So this one is Willamette, if I said that right. I hope I did. Willamette Valley um, Wool Company. And this oh yarn is called Buried. The colorway is Buried. Um, it is a duck feet base. Oh. I wonder what that reference is to. I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with Willamette Valley. Maybe. It's an 8020 super wash, super wash merino nylon. And this, I was not going to buy any yarn until the last day and towards the end. We were taking pictures of everything as we went, like our shopping list, and then we'd go back and review, what do we really want? Okay, well, like 10 minutes in, I just bought these. <laughs> I just bought one, one. Yeah. and then I went back later like, no, I really need at least <laughs> another one. So, so gorgeous, and so you. <gasps> love it, love it. Like, I it's hard against this red for you to see how purpley and stunning it is it is i keep looking at all these yarns Ooh. that are beautiful with it i have so anyways yeah so, so it's beautiful. just gorgeous i really wanted to buy a lot of her yarns and it's lynette lynette was the dyer, the dyer. Yes. that's what i thought um and we met a couple of lovely ladies there also who watched the podcast so Hi, that were really sweet so gorgeous yarn i really love her colorways you know one of the best things about her booth was it was right across the aisle from the massage, massage booth, yes. which I took advantage of. When yeah, it was fabulous. which was brilliant. It was so good. Brilliant to have a massage therapist there. Okay. Okay. So we have favorite, very, very, very favorite. That mm -hmm. is, I told you, it's my new best friend, and Emily's too. <laughs> so we'll have to show you our bag. This one. <laughs> oh, I'm Love hiding it. it. So got, got stash. stash. Love Look the logo that. is so cute. It's not a cute. This season. is Hula Hut yarns. Hula Hut yarns. And her name is Kathy again. She's <sighs> just so much fun. Another homeschool mom, yeah. which is kind of fun. Yeah, she homeschools. Her colors are all so fun. They have a vintage kind of flair to them. Very like 1950s luau. Yeah, her. Her inspiration was from a photo of her children at Disneyland in front of the tiki, um, the tiki room, mm -hmm. and you can totally catch that vibe yeah, when you just walk by and absolutely. see. I mean, she's done such a good job with that, and so I didn't have all of my yarns. These colors. My other one was the pink one I cast on already. I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. Love them. Love, 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 love. I just want to marry these colors <laughs> but I don't think my husband would approve okay. <laughs> I love them yeah. except for they have to go in this order right here this is the order they go in I gotta pull out my pink I really wanted to wait to show you all of them together but I had to start this I know sometimes you just have to start it's, oh, it's already... they're so gorgeous look at that and look at her cute yeah we logo. both got this yellow that's the that's the one back. you went back for. I went her. back for. I went running seriously as they were supposed to be closing. I thought like she waited until I went in the bathroom, so and then I came back out. I was like, "Where's she?" There and your yarn was there next to me, and it was sitting on top. And I kept taking it out, and looking at it, and I'm like, oh, "I've got to get it." But I think you thought that if I was there, you, I would say, "Deborah, do you <laughs> need that or something?" I don't know. I wouldn't have. I'd been like, "Run, hurry <laughs> before she closes." <laughs> so love, I love her that yarns, yellow. and she was just so sweet and delightful and. Fun. I, and she had her kids with her. They were helping. They weren't in the booth, but they were helping in the hotel yeah. rooms. Just they help a lot, which is really fun because we always like to Families, support. Yeah, we like to support businesses that are all about family. So I've got Huckleberry Trifle, Hucker, Huckle, Huckleberry Trifle, Huckleberry Chuckle, and Robin's Egg. Oh, I love those colors. I have no idea what I'm gonna make yet, but something with all three of them together yeah. because that combination is just that so... is so spring and fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, summery, summery, that yellow. yeah. Oh, it's so fun. So this one is cakewalk, which this reminds me of my grandmother Gray, yes. who very the... much was a 1950s luau yes. thrower. And at some point, when I can track down all the pictures, we're going to have a snippets from the past of that. Because that I have so quite a few of her things, too. 
I, I totally can see where she's drawing inspiration from. I love mm -hmm. it. And then this red is Huckleberry Sweets, and I don't, it's hard to tell, but it definitely has actually. a vintagey red flair. It's not. It's not the same as my sweater, even though it looks like, oh, look at it kind of is. It's, it's not the same it as this it, It's not showing up as well. It's really yep. red, 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 red. Like, so vibrant. Yeah, it's it's just so good. And not red with that yellow right there. Just yeah. Zing. So, lots of fun yarns. We loved, and the thing about it is it wasn't just about her yarn. We had so much fun talking to Kathy. We loved meeting her and chatting with her. And um, just, anyway. That, so, was, that was probably one of our favorite parts of the whole thing. I so here's her nice. card. If you want to go onto Instagram, um, she's Hula Hut Yarns on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Facebook, here's her card. Is that focused enough that you can see it? It's hard to tell. Okay. <laughs> so fun. So this is actually one of my favorite things I got. Look at my little keychain lot. Or he's an alpaca. And I actually can't remember the booth we got him at. They were alpacas. Alpaca. I'll tell you. Farmers? Ranchers? Shepherd? What do you call an alpaca keeper? What's okay. the proper title for that? It oh, is. Oh, you know. Black Wolf Ranch and Fiber. She's so good. So they are alpaca ranchers. And um, it's so actually several different people that own alpacas and they get all together and mill their yarn and everything. Um, they had gorgeous yarn. But this is what grabbed my attention because he's so cute. Look at his little pink ears and his pom-poms. Anyway, I love him. But I don't actually want to put him on my keys because I don't want him to stay cute. So he's probably just going to sit on his shelf and like keep me happy. Like mine over there yes, that sits there and stares happy. at me all day. Because look, if he was just sitting there, wouldn't he make you happy? He would. Peeking out of pom poms. <laughs> what else do we have to talk about? All right. We wanted to tell you a little bit. You don't bring your hundreds of necklaces I, that you bought. I only bought six. <laughs> so exaggerating. So we, oh, we also met came two. across. Oh, that's okay. Let me, right. let me let me let me mention these really yeah, quick. Do that. A couple of the other dyers that we met, and um, we don't have anything here to show you, but um, that we were so impressed with, and um, they were new to us, um, so we thought we'd share them. One is Night Owl Fibers. Her name is Rachel, and her yarns. Oh my goodness! Especially her self striping. Yeah. She had the most gorgeous self striping yarns. Um, in so many different bases, absolutely crisp, gorgeous stripes, just beautiful. And she's young, like she's 20 years old and been doing this for three Since years. Since she was 17, she started she's doing amazing, that. She's yeah. amazing, amazing. Check out Night Owl Fibers. And then the other one. Is Nutmeg Fibers. Mm -hmm. um, and she is Nutmeg Fibers on Instagram. And it's nutmegster, S-T-E-R dot com, if you want to go to her mm -hmm. website. And she's also a homeschooling mother, and she had one of her daughters there with mm -hmm. her in her booth. And I really loved her colorways. Mm -hmm. They were all naturally dyed. Mm -hmm. um, and and all the yarns. Oh, by the way, all the yarns from Hula Hut and at Nutmeg, I believe, were um, U.S. yarns. Yes. They were based in the U.S., so yes. sourced in the U.S. So it was really fun to meet some other homeschoolers. Um, I really liked how she was dying, you know, naturally. And there were mm -hmm. several different booths that were doing that, different dyers. And I really liked seeing that. She had a beautiful, that. beautiful aesthetic. But it, yeah, it was really just a soothing booth, like how it was laid out. Mm -hmm. All of her, it was just, just lovely. Really, really pretty. Um, and then our, yes. the last one we wanted to talk about is not yarn at all. So. All right. So, um. I actually, if you follow me on Instagram, you will see I posted some story, or you posted. I think I did, but it was in the stories, so it's not in my seat Somewhere, anymore. okay, but we posted about these beads. These are paper, um, these are made from paper, recycled paper beads, and they are made by the Lydia Project, or sold by Project Lydia, excuse me. 
And Project Lydia is um, a mission project that is to help women in Uganda who need a way to help support their families. And so they help them right in their villages and their homes, um, working directly with these women. It's not a sweatshop situation. It's very much a hand up. And um, they make baskets and these gorgeous, gorgeous beads. And they, oh, they're, they're stunning. They're really, they're really stunning. well made. Beautifully well made. They And they are a work of art. I have made paper mm -hmm. beads many times. I have worked really hard to make them very nice. I cannot make them like this. Yeah, they're, they do. They do um, a variety of different shapes of the beads. They do handbags, beautiful, gorgeous batiks. Oh, they were hand painted. Mm -hmm. Some really beautiful ones. Yeah, I mean, we makers understand other makers, and these women are artists and makers. And um, so, projectlydia.org is where you can find information about these gorgeous beads and, and the their other products. Very yes. affordable. Absolutely. They and are worth affordable. Every penny. Plus, one of the things I really love, I've seen other companies that they kind of, um, what's the word, they can sign with women mm -hmm. so that the women make their things, they can sign it to. The sellers but if they don't sell them these ladies aren't getting paid for their their work mm -hmm. um, project Lydia actually purchases them directly so that they can resell them and the women can get that money coming back to them quickly so I think that's really great they just bring in what they've made they purchased they're purchased from mm -hmm. them and the women have yes. the money did you also say the baskets that they yeah they have baskets they have from... the batik bags oh sorry from the banana leaves that are they're growing in their gardens yeah. so um, Project Lydia is an amazing organization and we talked to the lady whose sister started this and um, here's the information but so projectlydia.org. She's, she's there in Uganda working with the women mm -hmm. and then she ships them overseas and the woman that was in the booth that we bought them from she mm -hmm. takes them and sells them. Yeah. So one thing that is really nice that I like is that they offer um, this as a fundraiser. So if you have a group that needs to do a fundraiser, this is the way to do it. You order bracelets in packs of 250 for a dollar each. So you spend $250 and mm -hmm. they suggest that you sell them from between three to five dollars and you could make like $500 selling something that I feel is really worthwhile. Absolutely. Rather than, do you want some, do you want to buy cookie dough or whatever it is? Or the, what, whatever it may mm -hmm. be that you're like, okay, I don't really need that popcorn that I can't eat. <laughs> right, but you're trying to support kids. Like, yeah. this is a great fundraiser. Yeah, I can, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. gorgeous. We went crazy buying stuff. I bought some uh, necklaces for me that I really liked. And, and yeah. I bought six necklaces because <laughs> I have no restraint. That was actually the first thing I purchased before I bought anything yarn related were these beads and not these specific ones. Although I do have this one specifically too. Anyway, they're gorgeous. So pretty. All right. Alrighty. Well, that's a little recap about our time at Stitches West that has now come to a close. Now I know that if you're not there, sometimes you're like, okay, big deal. I don't really need to hear mm, all about it. So I thank know. you if you sat with us. Yes. We had a really great time connecting with people and, and crossing something off our bucket list, which really it's not crossed off because it's an ongoing thing. We just want to, we meet, want to do it again. We want to meet so many of you and we appreciate those of you who came up and introduced yourselves and thank you so much. I really left fun. my phone. When we went on our trip, I left my phone at home in Utah. Not yeah, on purpose. Not on purpose. <laughs> and so that made it a little bit hard for me to try and connect with, like, so I kept stealing Emily's phone and I'm calling my kids, what's my login? I can't remember. <laughs> so, so Emily was very gracious in letting me steal her phone a lot. <laughs> so I appreciate that. It's probably but, good for me to not have it so much. <laughs> it was really good for me. I was like, wait, how did I live before? Oh yeah, oh, I read yeah. books. Oh yeah, oh, we yeah. can do that, huh? I went to sleep at night. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> All right. We mentioned that we have a live video series on sock knitting that is starting today. Well, this podcast will not be airing today, unfortunately, um, February 28th. But we have announced Probably it previously. Tomorrow, so. And um, I announced it on Instagram. We have it on our website. So hopefully if you are interested in this, you have seen it in time to get started with us because we are starting it in 35 minutes. So we're almost done here. Okay. <laughs> so what we are doing is we want to help 
those of mm -hmm. you who haven't knit socks before because you're a little bit nervous about doing it and you want some extra assistance um, or somebody you know if you've done it before but you'd like just a little bit more information on it mm -hmm. this is great for you but it assumes that you already know how to knit you need to know how to knit and purl and cast on you know some of those basic things this is not a how to knit series it is a knitting socks <laughs> right right exactly so um, and we are knitting one specific sock pattern we're not covering every no option there is out there we are doing very very basic mm -hmm. so you can come learn what what we have to offer mm -hmm. but we hope that it will help demystify the right. socks like we were talking about earlier if you're afraid of seaming just try it if you're afraid of knitting yeah. socks just sit with us and try it so yeah. Absolutely. So that will start. Um, it's a live video series on YouTube. But it should save it here. so that it should be available. That you can go back mm -hmm. later and watch it right, if you want. Right, right. So, so if you're watching this on March 1st or You go later, back and then, watch and join yeah. us. Yeah. Just so the nice thing about being live is that you can mm -hmm. ask a question that you have as it comes up right there. Right. And we can mm -hmm. hopefully answer it. We'll see. This is our first time doing it, so we'll see how we do. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and okay. Deborah, by the way, Deborah will be covering Magic Loop, and I will be covering DPNs so that you can kind of see both okay. ways. All right. Last of all, we have a giveaway to announce. This is a super awesome giveaway. Okay. So here in Utah, there, this is the one we're doing? And... Yeah. Okay, so we're doing two. Are they going together? Together, yeah. Okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. Um, here in Utah, we have a um, amazing potters. They're called the Potter Smiths. Maybe the Pottery Smiths. I will make sure that that is in the show notes. Um, a link to them. And they are donating a gorgeous yarn bowl. Handmade yarn bowl that is just stunning. So I'm really excited to um, share that with you. And we'll insert a picture. It is the Pottery Smiths on Etsy, or on Etsy. Maybe they're on Instagram. Etsy, on Instagram. Or you can find them at thepotterysmiths.com. They are located here in Utah, like I said, and they make just gorgeous things. They do yarn bowls, but they also do other kinds of pottery, including beautiful bread bakers. And in fact, their bread bakers are probably their most popular item. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So um, we are doing a giveaway, um, and what we want you to do is comment below. Is that what we're doing, or do you want to in the no, Ravelry group? No, we're going to do in our Ravelry okay, group great. this time, but it also will yes. include this set that we purchased, this necklace and bracelet set from necklace. Project Lydia. So you'll get, and the wonderful thing is that everything will match because yes. the pottery bowl is a very similar color. So get this gorgeous necklace and bracelet from Project Lydia and the beautiful pottery bowl from the Pottery Smiths. And what we want you to do is, is share something that yeah. you have done on your bucket list. It doesn't have to be your knitting bucket list. Just, no, just bucket list in general mm -hmm. in life. Yep. If you haven't done anything from there, I want you to make some plans. What are you doing next? Mm. What's the next thing that you're doing? Get up. We want you to be doing it. Live life. Don't wait. Don't wait. Sometimes you have to make plans and well, prepare sure. for it, but don't prepare forever. Don't prepare forever to retire. Yeah. Retire. Sorry. <laughs> yes, that guy when hits a little close now. And don't <laughs> let fear stop you. Let unknown. It's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Like we are every single time when we sit down in front of a camera and think we're talking to a lens. Except for then we meet all of you and we realize yeah. we're talking to you and it's wonderful. So... So Don't go to our Ravelry group, which is meanwhile at the Castle group under the Groups tab. If you're not already mm -hmm. part of our group, go and join the group. Yes. And then there will be a thread there that you can answer the question. Excellent. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us today. Is that everything that you? I had? think so. This has been okay. a whirlwind, and hopefully we'll have some more projects. We're trying to be consistent here with our podcasting we're doing a good job we are doing good yay we're doing, us we're doing fabulous and we have some fun things that we have planned coming Lots up so including our sock knitting video series go watch it yay okay <laughs>